The question today that we'll be looking at is uh, what somebody asked us. It's, it's, will there be a third temple built in Jerusalem? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I want to encourage you as a subscriber, as a friend, as just a, maybe a viewer of this, uh, of this video or this podcast, um, to send us in your questions on, on the end times. This is Prophecy Countdown. So we'll be taking a look at uh, not only what the Bible has to say, but we'll also try to be answering your questions, your specific questions uh, about uh, whatever's, whatever's on your mind about the end times, maybe something that you've heard or somebody has told you. So this question today... Um, about the third temple is really a great question. Will there be a third temple built in Jerusalem? Uh, so let me start with a, a little bit of history. Uh, the first temple in Jerusalem was actually uh, constructed uh, by, by King Solomon. Uh, King Solomon back in, the, uh, back in the 10th century BC. It was built on Mount Moriah, uh, which is where the present Temple Mount is. Uh, Solomon was the son of King David, the beloved King David. However, the Bible says that the Lord would not permit David to build him a house, a temple, because David had blood on his hands. In, in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 3, it says that David was a, was a man of battles and had shed much blood. Uh, so the Lord would not let him build. However, David decided to go ahead and start uh, preparing and, and getting all the supplies ready for the temple. Uh, gold and silver, some of the implements that were used in worship, uh, as well as some of the timber that was used for their construction. Uh, so Solomon was able to construct the, the temple uh, that David had actually, had actually planned out. Um, now Solomon's temple replaced what was known as the, uh, as the tabernacle, the tabernacle in the wilderness that goes all the way back to the time of, of Moses uh, when the people of Israel were in the wilderness and uh, they'd move the tabernacle with them. That's where the, um, the Ten Commandments, where the Ark of the Covenant was stored uh, and it was brought into Solomon's temple. Now Solomon's temple stood until the Babylonians uh, came in about 400 years later and, and destroyed it around 586 BC. Uh, the Babylonians came in because of the, uh, because of the unbelief, because of the idolatry of the people of Judah. Uh, God allowed them to be uh, taken captive, taken to Babylon. Uh, but then again, they returned 70 years later. But the Babylonians had completely destroyed the temple. Now, the book of Ezra, Ezra was a priest and it, it documents the return of people of the people of Judah to, to uh, Jerusalem, as well as the rebuilding of the temple. Now, this temple that Ezra built was a, was a relatively modest structure. In fact, the people that, uh, that were present when the old temple was there, uh, they were mourning while the other people were rejoicing. And the Bible says you couldn't tell the difference between the people that were mourning and the people that were rejoicing. And the reason they were mourning is because it was a, a relatively insignificant uh, uh, stature. It was, a, it was a much smaller size than the original temple that Solomon built. However, by the time Jesus comes along, we start reading in the New Testament about the, uh, about the temple. It's now Herod's temple because Herod had completely um, uh, restored and, and had uh, enlarged and, and overlaid the entire temple, entire temple with, uh, with gold. Uh, so it was a magnificent structure uh, that Jesus was able to visit back in the, in the first century. Uh, however, it was, it was General Titus, General Titus, who around 70 AD came in uh, with the Roman legions and, and completely destroyed uh, Jerusalem as, as well as the temple. He went on to become a Caesar. Uh, he was Titus Caesar Vespasius. So again, back to your question about, about the third temple. Again, it's a great question. It's been almost 2,000 years. 2,000 years since there's a temple uh, in Jerusalem. So the question is, well, how could there possibly be a temple in Jerusalem when on the Temple Mount uh, we, have the, we have the Dome of the Rock that the Muslims had, had built hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and it's been standing there. And the Muslims are really in control of the Temple Mount. Uh, so from a natural point of view, it's almost impossible to think that there, there could be a temple. Uh, but here's the thing. That, that mosque is called the Alaska Mosque, by the way. Um, regardless of how the odds are stacked against a temple being built on the same mosque, uh, the, uh, the same mount, uh, the Bible makes it clear that a temple will be built. I would say that I'm actually 100% positive that there will be a, a temple built during the, at least during the tribulation period. The Bible makes it clear that there will be a temple in Jerusalem during the tribulation period. That's why the third temple is often called 
the tribulation pen temple. Both the book of Revelation and the prophecies of Daniel assure us that this must happen. For example, in the prophecy in Daniel, that Daniel speaks about the 70 weeks or the 70 times 7 years, 490 years, we discover that there's one week that remains, which we know is the 7 years that we call the tribulation period. Uh, it's also known as the time of Jacob's trial. In Daniel 9, chapter, 27, uh, chapter 9, verse 27, we see, for example, both the Antichrist, who's called the Prince to Come, and the Tribulation Temple. This is what it says, verse 27, Then he, that is the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. In more common language, the, the Antichrist will participate, possibly even broker a peace treaty uh, that will allow possibly the temple to be built. Uh, and this peace treaty is supposed to last for seven years. However, in the middle of that period of 42 months uh, into the peace treaty, the Antichrist will cause the sacrifices and offerings in the temple to, to cease. Uh, Daniel in chapter 12 comments on this as well. He says, from the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up, there'll be 1,290 days. That's, that's three and a half years. So after the, the Antichrist brings an end to the sacrifices in the temple, till the end is another three and a half years. This is why many scholars, including myself, believe that this happens at the end of the seven years of tribulation, what Jesus refers to as the Great Tribulation. Uh, Jesus references, for example, this in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. He says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. So da Jesus is actually referring to the prophecy of Daniel as something that will happen in the future, during the end times. Now, the holy place that's referenced here is another, another word for the, the temple. So Daniel and Jesus tells us that there will be a temple. Now, if this isn't enough, the Apostle John, when he's given this vision in the book of Revelation, he's told to measure this tribulation temple. This is what it says in Revelation chapter 11. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. They will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. So I can say with 100% certainty that there will be uh, a, another temple, a third temple, what we know as the tribulation temple. Uh, you know, today, uh, there are people that are completely unaware of the verses I just shared with you. Uh, they've never read anything on Bible prophecy, uh, but they, are, they, are, they have a keen interest in making sure that there is this another temple uh, to be built on Mount Moriah, uh, there's a there's a organizations like the uh, Temple Institute and the Temple Mount Faithful, and they actively advocate uh, for the building of a temple on Mount Moriah. Now they consider it. This has nothing to do with Bible prophecy. Uh, they consider it a fulfillment of the destiny of the Jewish people. That the Jewish people need to have this temple in order to restore their sacrifices, to be able to restore their religion. You know, there's been no sacrifices for the Jewish people uh, since 70 A.D. Uh, this is why, for example, on Passover, the Jewish people never have lamb. Lamb was always a part of the Passover, but they don't have any lamb because there is no temple. There's no opportunity to sacrifice a lamb. So the, as a people of God, as a believer, as a Christian, if you're listening to this, if you believe that Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God, that He was the Messiah, that He died on the cross for your sins and the sin of the world, that, that He uh, rose on the third day, that He's coming back again, that He sent into heaven and is coming back again, what are we to think if we see a, a temple uh, being constructed? Uh, that the foundations are being led or that money is being raised for the temple or maybe even it's that services are now scheduled. What are we to think? Well, here's the thing. The Apostle Paul writes about this as well. And this is what he has to say. He said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, he says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 
So you see, Paul echoes exactly the same thing, that there will be a time when this, this, uh, this man of perdition, this, this, this prince, this antichrist comes, and that won't happen until something happens first. According to this perspective, there's, there's something that has to happen first, a, a falling away. Now, according to the, the Bible, the Antichrist presence and desecration of the temple period is, is key to understanding what we call eschatology. Eschatology, that's a Greek word, but it just means the study of the end times or the last things. Uh, the end times, the study of Revelation, the study of the tribulation period is a time when we understand uh, God's ultimate judgment on an, a disbelieving world, but at the same time, the purpose is to call the people of Israel, as well as anybody that has ears to hear, back to God so that they can repent and become the people of God and, 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 and be embraced by God that, that loves them so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for them. Now, as, as believers, as true believers, if you're alive today and listening to this, you will not be here for this tribulation time. If we, if we read uh, uh, verses 3 and 4 of 2 Thessalonians, which I just did, Paul was not done then. Uh, if we read a couple verses later, there's, a, there's an assurance that we have uh, that we will not be here during the tribulation period. Let me read that to you. Um, in verse 6, Paul continues and he says, And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. You know, I'm going to end my update here because this is getting into a, to a different subject. We answered the question, will there be a third a temple built in Jerusalem? The answer to that question is affirmatively yes, 100% confidence that there will be a, a, a tribulation temple built. At the same time, I want to stop here because I want to get back and talk a little bit more about this one that is restraining and how it will be revealed in the, in the end times. So thank you so much for uh, listening to us today. Thank you for subscribing and uh, sharing this video and this podcast with your friends. Uh, come back twice a week on Prophecy Countdown. We'll have more updates for you. If you do have questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to send us an email. The email is kind of long. It's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. That's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to be able to hear from you, and we'll get to your questions. God bless until next time. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.